quick introduction. This is a Mackie soundboard, 32 channels right here. Okay, last four channels are stereo channels. We'll get to that in a minute. What I want you to really know is that each column is a strip. Okay, it's one channel. They're numbered 1 to 32. We could use a 48. That would be really nice. This is kind of the industry standard as far as nice high schools go. Um, I'd like to have more, but I'm okay with this. How many channels are like music CDs? Oh, the hunt, yeah. 64, 82, 100, yeah. Uh, starting at the top, we won't worry about the back right now, but we're just gonna worry about these knobs. This is your trim pot. This is one of the stages of volume. There are three stages of volume on the board. You have this, this fader, and this master fader right here. Your first stage of volume, the trim, it's like a gate. The more you open the gate, the more horses can come through. Okay? You close the gate down, wild, one horse comes through. <laughs> I like that. Really I like that. Right? Open, wide open gate, a lot of horses come through. So, uh, this is asking for more signal. This is that thing I was talking about last week that we had a big debate about. Like, it's more gain. Give me more, give me more. It essentially is giving you more volume, but it's also giving you more noise with possibly a microphone, you uh, could be a guitar, electric guitar, synthesizer, it doesn't matter, all right? You're still asking for more what, more of whatever that signal is. So that's your trim or your gain. These next six right here, these are auxiliaries. An auxiliary is simply a different place to send the music to. So let's say auxiliary number one, that's the stage monitors. So all of the instruments are in the orchestra pit and we're feeding their music up to the stage and all of their mics are running through auxiliary one so we turn all their mics up through auxiliary one auxiliary one goes all the way across here and it has its own master fader right there so all six of these have their own master faders come back to that um, auxiliary one and two there's the word pre by them and pre means before. before. So these operate before the fader. They are independent of this thing. So whatever I do with this, it doesn't matter. Music is still coming out of these things. Has no control over them. So let's say auxiliary two is the orchestra pit monitors. We're going to have all the mics running through all the vocals going down into the pit, down in the orchestra pit. And this is the volume that we control each of those mics with down in the pit. So vocals go to the pit, music goes to the stage. Uh, these two are selectable pre-fade or post-fade via this button right here that says pre underneath it. If I push this down, then these become pre-fade. They are independent of this thing, pre-fader. If I put, let this up, now they are post-fade, which means they follow this fader, whatever this fader does. The volume in those speakers, whatever those speakers are plugged into, wherever they are, it follows those. These two are always post-fade. They say post right by them. So independent, interchangeable, and always following. Okay? This varies from board to board. Some have more, some have less. Moving on to the EQ. This knob right here controls all your highs. And it controls everything from 12 kilohertz up to 20. And that's a big range to control. So you have to be careful with this because you can only boost it or cut it. Minus 15 decibels, plus 15, and you can cut it down to however you want it or bring it up to whatever you want it. But know that you're boosting that whole 8,000 range, which is a lot. Uh, the mid-range mid -range frequencies give you a little more control. You have two knobs for that. You have one that you can select the frequency you want to control, and it goes from 100 to 8 kilohertz. So you can choose a frequency between 100 and 8,000, and you can boost or cut just that one tiny range of frequencies rather than boosting or cutting that 8,000. You're, you're selecting a very small range to control with this knob up here. The bottom EQ button 
it controls everything below 100 hertz, and it's just a boost or a cut. It's got a button by it that says 80 hertz low. If you drop that button, it cuts everything below 80 hertz out. It's gone. So if you're micing a kick drum, you want that button down. You want that to come through. If you let it up, you're saying, I don't want that. And if you don't, if this is up and it's not active, then you're not hearing that kick drum at all because those typically start around 80 hertz and go down. A good kick drum will go down into that 40 range and sound really nice. All right. Moving on down, this is the pan knob. Pans left or right. Some schools, we don't have it, but some schools will have a left, center, right. Uh, most professional theaters have a left, center, right. Kind of like your home theater system. Most of your vocals, your voices come out of the center speaker and then your left and right. You get some voices, but you primarily get your sound effects and your music. Uh, we are pretty much everything coming out of left or right. We don't have a left, right, center. If we did, and we wanted, let's say we had uh, all the guys, the, the tenors over here, and we had all the altos in the center, and we had all the sopranos over at the stage left, then what we would do is we'd arrange the knob in this fashion so that to the audience, it really seems, and it, it truly is, all of the tenor guys are coming out of just the house left speakers. And if we've got a center section, then all of the uh, alto girls are coming out of just the center speakers, and then all the sopranos are coming out of the house right speakers. So what that tells us is our, our brain, it doesn't make sense for our brain to hear the alto or the... Um, the tenors coming out of speakers over here when they're standing on the opposite side. So having a left, center, right really adds to uh, the fullness and richness of the sound. But we're just a left, right, so we pretty much leave everything center. Uh, there's an exception to that, which I'll follow up with in a second. The OL button, it's a red light, actually, an LED, and it stands for overload. So if it's bouncing red, or if it's all red, you're overloading all the circuitry, and you can fry stuff inside here. So do you have to just cut it off after that happens? Well, that means you your gates you got too many horses coming in. So you shut your gate a little bit, and that takes down the trim, takes down the gain, and then you're not letting so much signal come through. You know if you have signal by this green light. This green light's on, it's bouncing, it's solid. Uh, you know you've got signal. So there are times where uh, I know that a girl's coming on from stage left over there, and she's coming on in two pages. I want to make sure her mic is working because she's got a solo coming up, and I want to make sure I hear every word of that solo. Then I hit this solo button right here, and then I have headphones, and I can listen backstage, and I can hear her whispering backstage. I can hear people around her. If I don't see a green light, she may not be talking. And it may not be enough noise going on around her that I can hear it. So what I'll do is I'll tell the stage manager, okay, get so-and-so and have her whisper. So stage manager gets her and she whispers. I'm like, okay, I got her. Stage manager says she's whispering and I don't hear, I don't hear her and I don't see a light. Uh, okay, switch batteries. If that doesn't work, switch mics. And then let me know whose mic she has. Then I can make the adjustment. Um, yeah, I can use this, and uh, I have in the past. I hear conversations all backstage. So everybody that's got a mic on, if I want to, I can hear their backstage conversations. You hear some pretty messed up stuff. I have heard some goofy things. I will tell you that. But it's a safety net. So the DJ at the wedding, what he's doing with the next track, this one's playing. He's got this one soloed, he's listening, and he's got it queued up, he's ready to go, and that's why he's got one earmuff on and one off. So he can hear what's going on, and he can hear what's coming up. You can't hear it. Okay. Yeah. So that's what the solo does. It allows you to hear before the audience hears it. It allows you to hear it. All right, uh, moving on down. Well, that's obviously the mute button. Okay. That cuts off everything. One, two, three, four, and left, right these three bottom buttons. They correspond to this one, two, this three, four, and this is your left, right. So 
For example, uh, let's say we've got AG Harmony. We've got seven guys with wireless microphones in their hands, and they're all at different levels, like this. Um, but they're all really loud, and I want to control their overall volume, but I can't use seven fingers and make them go up and down equally. It, it doesn't work right. So what I do is I push down the one key on all of all seven of those mics. And I turn the pan knob to the left and all of them. Now I can control all of their volume by pushing on that button and using this finger. But this knob has to be turned to the left as well. So now I'm controlling seven mics. I've got 14 mics that I want to control because I've got all of the orchestra pit down there as well. So I have seven singers and I've got seven instruments. I can't, I don't have 14 fingers. Even if I w could control them all at the same time, I don't have 14. So instead, I put all of the one, two, and push down one, turn all those to the left, and the one, two, turn all these to the right, turn that one to the right. Now I can control the overall volume of the seven mics and the overall volume of the seven instruments with two faders. So now I'm controlling 14 mics with two faders. I do still have control, individual control. So let's say the saxophone's really hot that night because that he's just on fire, he's, he's ramping it up. I can pull that back a little bit if I need to. Uh, same thing with a vocalist. Somebody's not as, as loud tonight as they were last night. I can boost them up a little bit and still leave these where they are. Same thing follows through with three and four. I can just choose three and four. So it gives me four subgroups. So I can control essentially 28 channels with four faders if I need to. Typically, we run everything with all the one, two, usually works, uh, up and all the left, right, down. That all goes to this master fader right here. So uh, even if these are all up, if this is down, nobody's hearing anything. It's the Grandmaster Fader. So that's what it does. That controls everything. Now we leave that right around Unity, which we'll talk about later as well. And we can control the mics here. One of the big things that the soundboard operator has to watch out for is when a person's coming on stage, if you happen to miss the first couple of words that they say because you were distracted by something or whatever, uh, one of the worst things you can do is have, you know, they're backstage, they're muted. One of the worst things you can do is they come on, they start talking, and it's like, yeah, hey, you're doing, uh, yeah, everything's cool. But what's going on there? Because all of a sudden you unmuted them and the volume went from zero to minus five dB real fast. So instead, what you do is you leave them unmuted, and then you slowly bring it up. And then it's a natural. They walked on, and as they walked on, their volume got louder. So it's a lot more natural to the audience than just from zero to boom. Yeah, teleportation. Exactly. Make sense? Exactly. So trim, auxiliaries, different places to send music, um, EQ, pan, left and right, which also controls the one, two subfaders. Overload button, signal button, mute, solo, fader, subgroup, grandmaster fader. Woohoo! Got it?